welcome everybody back to our Wednesday night sessions. And um, again, we are continuing in a prayer pattern um, for this month. And uh, we talked about some things the last time. We talked about praying specifically for, for individuals, uh, especially those that were lost. And so uh, I'm hoping that you're continuing to pray, uh, pray over that person. Uh, that God would again reveal himself to them, his truth to them, and that he will draw them unto himself. Uh, tonight I want to look at a few different things. <clears throat> uh, kind of a, like I said earlier, a pattern, <clears throat> a pattern for prayer. And it's very simple. And uh, we'll look at that in light of what we're uh, looking at for this month. It's kind of like a, a like Thanksgiving type uh, prayer time. And so... <clears throat> Yeah, if you have your Bibles, we'll be looking at a lot of different verses, especially in the book of Psalms. Um, and so, uh, but before we do that, let, let's bow in a word of prayer and we'll, we'll get tonight's session started. So let's pray. Father, we thank you again for the day you give us. We thank you for your love. We thank you for answered prayer. Lord, as we take these moments and lift them up to you and look at your word, Lord, instill within us a, a desire to seek after you, to lift up the needs that we see, <clears throat> the needs that we experience every day, and to bring them to you. Lord, we're, we're, basic, we're, we're powerless for what we can do. But Lord, you are almighty. You are sovereign. Lord, you, are, you, you possess those things that would show favor to your people. And we ask that you continue to move in our hearts, not, not simply just to answer every prayer, but to, Father, to build up that faith within us as well, that we can go to you rather than going to the world. We thank you, Lord, that you love us, <clears throat> that you'll guide us through this time. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Like tonight, like I said earlier, <clears throat> a lot of what we're going to look at will be found in the book of Psalms uh, because Psalms is really uh, kind of like like the hymnal uh, of the Old Testament. A lot of what we see in its in its authorship, uh, and there are several different ones uh, throughout the Psalms. Uh, most of them are written by uh, Psalms of David, but there's other uh people who've written other parts of, of the book of Psalms. And, but yet, Psalms is a compilation of very <clears throat> deep and moving life experiences in what happened in the people's lives as they, as they wrote these out. And, the, and they serve as a reminder of what they were going through and how God showed his wisdom, his favor, his instruction, his leadership, his his answers <clears throat> to them in their in their in their songs as they as they wrote these songs or the psalms. Um, <clears throat> I was out uh, in a yard sale one time in Norman, and uh, I was just looking through some things at this one particular uh, yard sale garage sale, <clears throat> and I saw two big giant books that were on a table. And uh, they're probably about four inches thick, two of them. And uh, I, I was kind of looking at them. And uh, as I went over there, um, I, I looked at the title of the books and it was called The Treasury of David. And it was written by, <clears throat> uh, what's his name? Well, I can't even think of his name now. But <clears throat> uh, Spurgeon, Spurgeon's volumes on the treasury of David, two giant volumes, and it covers the whole 150 chapters of the book of Psalms and very, very detailed in its, its commentary, uh, application, uh, notes, for the, notes for the preacher, um, all kinds of information out of the book of Psalms. And sometimes I like to just get that book and just read through uh, what his interpretation and his application in, in, in regarding the book of Psalms. But um, <clears throat> tonight I want to focus on a couple of areas. Um, and it's, very, it's a very simple pattern, if you will, to help you in your 
prayer time. Um, <clears throat> If your prayer time and you, your, your experience and your prayer life is beginning to grow, this will be a good little pattern to follow. And um, a lot of people know this as the Acts outline. Um, and simply, uh, the word Acts is an acronym, actually. Uh, it means adoration, confession, <clears throat> thanksgiving, and supplication. And so we're going to look at these four things tonight. Hopefully I can do them all in one session, but we may have to uh, do them in uh, two different sessions. But um, again, Book of Psalms is a, is, is a book about practical experience, the things that happen. Some of it's tragic. Um, some of it's very heartfelt. <clears throat> Sometimes uh, what we read in the Psalms really identifies with what we're going through in our lives and just like some of the some of the words that you see throughout throughout the book talk about a time of prayer almost in every chapter there's there's a call to pray for example in chapter four the the psalmist says hear me when i call hear me when i call in in chapter five it says give ear to my words O lord consider my meditation so a lot of the a lot of the psalms have that element of prayer talking to god about what's in their heart what's going on in my life for example whether it be sickness or things that that cause us anxiety that cause us to fret or to fear uh, cause us worry um, causes us to have a concern about something we see that in this particular book and so tonight I want to just look at some things and in the first part the first part that we're going to look at is that word adoration adoration and uh, ad adoring something in its simple in a simple definition is just looking at something and casting words of wonder at it something that you that that's you show a lot of favor to because of its beauty, because of its likeness, because of its magnitude. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I use the example of the, uh, the Grand Canyon several times because when I first saw it, I couldn't say anything because it was so, the magnitude of it was overwhelming. I, I had a picture in my mind of what it may have looked like. But when I arrived on the scene and I saw it in person, it, it just took took words away from me of, of the way I could describe it. I just had to stand there and just look at it, just wonder. When I first saw the you know the, a large mountain with snow on the on the on the peak of that mountain, I could just wonder at it. I was a, a summer missionary at one time. <clears throat> we took a we took a trip to Alaska. And as we were traveling from Anchorage to Fairbanks, we took a long road. It was about a six hour trip. But halfway on our trip, we passed by Mount McKinley. It was on the right side of us. And, and, and the driver said, oh, man, you guys have a blessing tonight or a blessing today because there's no clouds on Mount McKinley. And we could, as we got closer and closer, you could see how giant or how how massive this mountain was. Beautiful setting, especially when we went, got into Fairbanks. We got into Fairbanks and we could look south and we could see that mountain just sticking up under the sunset. Beautiful sight. Again, words were hard to find that, that would describe the magnificence of that. And that's kind of what adoration is it's it's ascribing wonder it's ascribing a a sense of awe towards something an object and this is in this particular case uh you know the lord the lord begins to be the focus of our adoration when we adore something like that especially with the lord as the focus of our adoration it kind of just takes away and it makes our issues it makes our situations kind of take a back seat because now our focus is upon the Lord. Our focus is on God. In the Psalms, 
if you'll look in chapter 48, <clears throat> have you turn there really quickly. And you could write these down. Again, you can look at this broadcast and see, or this recording, go back through it. Make sure you write these uh, verses down. In uh, Psalm 48, verse 1, it says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great King. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. This is adoration at its purest. This is adoration, just again, talking about how great God is. We can't really define him to a point, to a degree, but we can say words that give us an expectation of his glory. We don't really, we, you know, we're finite. We're just finite in our minds and in our understanding of, of how to express God in our, in our language. But again, he goes beyond that. He goes beyond mere words trying to describe because he's beyond those things. But here simply the psalmist says, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God in the mountain of his holiness. I referred to uh, in, in, in some sermons about, you know, my, my first movie experience of that I don't remember. And that was the uh, that was the Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston. And um, I remember that scene where he's, you know, where he has uh, he has saved uh, or he has been a part of he's he's found him a new family out there in the desert. And, and his wife to be is there. And, and all of a sudden they look in, they look up to this mountain and they see a mountain and they see this this bush that burns with fire yet is unconsumed. And that's kind of the what he how he describes it. And he wants to go see, and they that you know the, the woman tells him that's the that's where God dwells, that's where his dwelling place is, that's a holy place. In our situations in life, again, it's easy to get caught up in all the things that affect us, and it, it may cause us to be anxious, it may cause us to fear, it may cause a certain amount of dread in our life. But one of the good things about knowing scripture is looking at a passage like this and taking our mind off of us temporarily and focusing our worship, focusing our adoration on the Lord. If you look at verse 9 and 10, the same same chapter, at, uh, yeah, Psalm 49, or Psalm 48, I'm sorry, verse 9, it says, We have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is the praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. This kind of gets into a little bit about praying the scriptures. How, you know, you, some people talk about that. They say, you ought to, you ought to pray the scriptures. Now, that's, that's a good thing to do because we might get into that eventually. But ascribing adoration, adoring something. You know, you know, sometimes my my kids say something about a little girl or a little boy and they say, oh, she is so adorable. Maybe the way she dresses or her haircut or she's just small and just beautiful. She is so adorable. This is kind of the way we want to look at not, you know, not to, to look at the Lord, but not in terms of just being small and pretty, but adoring him because of who he is. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. <clears throat> Another passage in Psalm chapter 42, or 92, I'm sorry, getting all my numbers mi mixed up. Psalm 92. <clears throat> Again, write these down. Keep track of them. The whole, the whole chapter is a hymn of experience of adoration. Listen to some of the some of the verses as we go through this. It is it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Again, how can you go wrong by reading scripture and applying scripture to your prayer time? 
It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. What are you going through? <clears throat> you know, ask yourself, what is it that's heavy on my heart right now? What is it that is of a concern in my life? What does the scripture say? It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord. Sometimes we don't want to think of the bad things that happen to us as maybe got part of God's plan. But what if we took that? God, I thank you for what's going on in my life because you're going to show yourself strong in my life. To give thanks. It is a good thing, it says, to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. You know, a prayer time doesn't just have to be just words that you're praying. It could be a it couldn't be a worship experience. It can be a time where you where you sing a song where something just comes to your heart and you begin to sing some of the old hymns that, that are easy to remember. You know, you could probably even just, you know, I don't I don't I don't want you to steal a songbook from church, but you know, if you know of a song, Google a song, How Great Thou Art, or Amazing Grace, and you know, have the words there with you. And as you're praying, when you're worshiping him, when you're giving adoration to the Lord, sing that song. You know, <clears throat> this is one place where you can sing a song and not worry if you're, in, you know, if 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 you're if you're off key or you know you're you're singing it too fast or you don't sing it right, you know, whatever. This is just a time for you to adore the Lord. Sing that song. You know, I, <clears throat> there's a cartoon we was watching with my, my, my kids one night, and this little bitty monster thing was in a little bitty car that was flying around, and, and he, you know, so the, the, the little phrase come out, and said, dance like no one's watching. Well, sing like no one's listening. You know, sing a song, sing a song of praise. Again, it says, it is a good thing. And he says, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Whether, whether or not we're having a good day or not, God is being faithful to you. God is showing his loving kindness to you every day, in the morning, at night. You know, I, <clears throat> I used to have issues sleeping because I had, I, I, I believe I really had the beginnings of sleep apnea. I'd lose my breath when I was sleeping at night. And sometimes that would scare me because I'd wake up gasping for air. But after I, you know, after I lost a, a lot of weight, my sleep has gotten a lot better. I don't, <clears throat> I don't, I don't snore. Well, I, sometimes I ask my wife, I said, did I snore? And she'd say, no. And I'm, I'm kind of glad because again, that really disrupted my rest. I couldn't rest really well, really well. And so, but after I was able to, to, to sleep, God showed, me his strength and knowing that even though I, I, I had those times where I gasped for air, because I really saw, I thought one of these days I'll probably quit breathing. But again, I was, I, I was secure in knowing that, you know, if I, if I, you know, again, if I had passed away or if I would have died in my sleep, I'd know I'd been in heaven. But again, I did some things in my personal life to make sure that I could have a better health outcome. But I gave in to pray, showing, because God showed me his loving kindness, his faithfulness every night. Then it says in, on, in verse three of Psalm 92, upon an instrument of 10 strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound, for thou Lord hast made me glad through, my, through thy work, I will triumph in the works of thy hands. Again, the experience that he's speaking of is one of worship. It's one of adoration. It's one where we get on our hands and knees and just begin to focus less on us and more on the Lord. It's a good thing, it says. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. It says, a brutish man knoweth not, neither doth a fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. 
again, we don't simply worship a stone statue. We don't simply worship some sort of memorial somewhere. We don't simply worship a, a grand peak of a mountain that like some do. We don't worship the, the, the goings on of a river that flows through the countryside and, and gives life to those vegetation. We don't, we don't worship objects like that or we don't worship the heavenlies out there and things that move in space. We worship the creator of those things. Think about that. You worship the creator of those things. So right now, let's pray. Look at that, look at those verses. Again, Lord, you are great and most worthy of my praise. I praise you for the unfailing love and righteousness. And then it says, Lord, most high, it is good to praise your name. So let's just pray just for a moment and we'll continue here in just a minute. Father, we thank you that as, as many things that may afflict us or bother us, we can come right now before you to lift up your name because we see your handiwork. We see the beauty of your creation. We see the beauty of how you work. We, we see the evidence of your life and your, your, the, the faith that we possess. And it's all because of what you've done. It's because of you loving us. And Father, we stand in all of that, that you as a creator created this world, the universe and all things in it. All those things are yours, but yet you love each and every one of us equally. Lord, we adore you because of your love for us. We adore you because of how you provide for us. Even when, the, when it doesn't look like right now, it's coming down the road. And Father, we thank you for how you show us your beauty every day. Because when we worship you, when we pray to you, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to lift up your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a few more verses in this particular subject heading. In Psalm 148, if you'll turn there real quickly. <clears throat> Psalm 148. <clears throat> Psalm 148 is a, again, is a psalm of praise almost. Just goes like this. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. All he had to do was speak. His majesty. And again, this is just a part of what we see in the Psalms. It's not exhaustive. There's plenty of more. As you read through the Psalms, find a time that you can just visibly sit there and soak in it. Soak in the scriptures that... Talk about praising the Lord. Soak in the scriptures that, 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 that talk about his loving kindness, forever love for us. Find time to, to soak in that, meditate in it, and begin to offer prayer in the form of adoration. The last thing uh, on this particular session, we talked about the letter A. Again, ACTS, the acronym ACTS. The last one is confession. Confession. Confession is simply telling the Lord what he already knows. Okay. But it gets more personal because sometimes we need to confess our wrongdoings. We need to confess our sins. There are things that stand in the way of God acting, holding up the work that God wants to do. And, some, and, and many times it, it lies on us. God wants to use us as useful vessels. God wants to use us as, as instruments of faith. But there are times when maybe selfishness or things or perhaps habits, uh, practices that we're engaged in cause us to not be fully utilized. Uh, 
uh, again in Psalm, in the book of Psalms, <clears throat> or on Proverbs, I'm sorry, it says that, you know, the, the iniquity that's within our life causes us to, to not be heard from God, or, uh, you know, we can't hear from God because of the iniquity that's in our own heart. It cuts off the communication. Again, God doesn't show, God will not show favor to those who have unconfessed sins. One of the biggest ones that we know of, if you'll, if verses that can talk about confession of sins is found in the book of 1 John. If you'll turn there real quickly. <clears throat> 1 John chapter 1. Because it, there's a contrast. There's a contrast. And it says in verse 7, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, has, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. In verse 8 it says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, and here's where the confession comes in. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's a, there's a picture of this, this act. There's a picture of this beautiful act of, of, of confession and forgiveness in the book of Isaiah. If you'll remember, Isaiah, you know, he, he said, I'm, I'm a man with unclean lips. And the prophet was touched by some fiery tongs and it cleansed his sin. Eventually, he got to the point of where he said, Lord, you know, send me. Who, who shall go for us? And he said, I'll go. Send me. I'll go. But we see that beautiful picture of the confession and what it does to unleash the usefulness and the prayer, the answered prayer within our life is a clean vessel. You know, <clears throat> I remember at times when I used to, you know, especially in my single in my single days, you know, I didn't wash the dishes as well as I could. My wife probably thinks I don't do that now, but there were times when I was single, I'd keep a glass up on the on the counter. And I would just refill it because I was the only one drinking from it. You know, nobody else was. So I'd pour something in it and drink it, you know, Kool-Aid or whatever it may have been. But I'd use the same glass. And even though it made a ring in the bottom with the cool, old Kool-Aid, I'd, I'd still use it because, again, it was just me. You know, eventually there would come a time when that would probably turn moldy, it would turn unuseful. And then I would have to clean it to be able to use it. In the same respect, that's what God desires of us, to be clean vessels, to have that act of confession continually in our lives. Uh, in Psalm 32, it says, Thank you, Lord, that when I confess my sins, you are faithful and, and will forgive me. Again, that's from uh, 1 John 1, 9. But look at Psalm 32. <clears throat> We'll close here in just a minute for this particular session. Psalm chapter 32. <clears throat> if you look at verse 5, <clears throat> actually the whole chapter is good. It says, but in verse 5 it says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. What does that mean in English? It means we've confessed. I told the Lord, what my sin is. And sometimes that's hard to do because a lot of times that sin, we want to keep it hidden. We want to keep it in the, in the, in the, in the, back, in the backyard of our hearts and minds. We don't, we don't like to expose it. We don't want to talk about it. We don't want anybody else to know. You know, it's, it's, it's just, it's, but, but it needs to be told. Again, he says, I acknowledge my sin unto thee. In mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. There was a meeting of men at Falls Creek a few years back. It's been several years. But one of the speakers that, that came, he told of his secret life of being involved in pornography. And, you know, that took a lot for him to talk about. But he said nobody knew. His wife didn't know, his children, his church. But secretly, he, had a, he lived a life involved in pornography. Tried to quit, tried to stop, tried to do different things. Eventually, God 
forgave him and delivered him from that sin because it was beginning to affect his life. But he sought the Lord. <clears throat> he did some practical practices, you know, to, to remove that out of it, to basically to kill it, to get it out of his life. But he confessed it. And a lot of the men that were there, man, they were heartbroken. Maybe not to that degree of sin, but other things in their life as pastors and teachers, things that were heavy in their hearts that they had that they needed to deal with. And that night there was a grand confession at the altar. When that confession is made, when it's sincerely made, God blesses, God restores, God redeems. Psalms 51, it says, I have sinned against you, God. What I have done is wrong. Please forgive me, purify me, and restore my joy. Again, these two things, adoration and confession, in the, the acronym of the word ACTS, A-C-T-S. So we covered those two tonight. Next session, we'll cover uh, the, the next two letters, the T and the S. So let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you that your word is full of scripture, your words that tell us how to focus on you how to read the Psalms, to find the praise that these writers developed as you dealt with them. They lifted up your name. They proclaimed your name. They saw the magnificence of all that you are for them and you delivered them. Many times, even like David, came to a point in his life in Psalm 51, to recognize how wrong he was in doing what he did. But he confessed those things and he asked you to restore unto him the joy of your salvation. Lord, draw us to that place where we're eager to do those things, to, con to con confess our sins, Lord, and to adore you because of what you promise us. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen.